and I will let you know once we are ready to go. Okay. All right, the user that's uh, entitled DMC, would you please provide your first and last name and the item that you are, are here to attend? DMC. Oh, sorry. Uh, uh, there's some lag. I kind of missed what you. I would just like your uh, first, first and last name, and the item that you are attending. Oh yeah, it's uh, David. David Corns uh, from TV Architect. Uh, we are here for uh, 1439 Elm Street. Okay, thank you. All right, Tom, uh, floor is yours. Okay, good afternoon. My name is Tom Senderman. I'm the vice chair of the Historic Conservation Board. I'd like to take a minute to remind everyone about the rules of this proceeding. This proceeding is at all times governed by the rules of the procedure adopted by the board on September 26, 2011 amended March 23rd, 2015, last amended March 9th, 2020. A copy of the rules of procedure is available for review online. All those planning to testify today, which does not include those solely making arguments such as attorneys will be sworn in before their testimony. This is a quasi judicial hearing. As such, the board reserves the right to deliberate in private. The Ohio rules of evidence do not apply to this hearing, however, professional rules of conduct do apply and candor to the tr tribunal is required. The board members are citizen volunteers and are not paid for their service. They are treated as public officials under Ohio law. Any attempt to influence them, including but not limited to bribery, intimidation, retaliation, which may include contacting their employer and attempt to exert influence is punishable as a crime. All should be aware that this meeting is being tape recorded. Therefore, please speak clearly into your microphone and state your name and address for the record. In the event of any technical difficulties with the video conferencing technology, I may continue or postpone this hearing at my discretion. All participants providing testimony must have both camera and audio features turned on in order to participate. With that said, we'll proceed to the first item. Uh, Mr. Owen, are, are, uh, do you want to present that the, there's a change in the uh, agenda? Uh, so we have had a request to move item three to the first item in the agenda to entertain a proposal from the applicants. Okay. And uh, who, who would like to uh, make that proposal on, on behalf of the applicant? My name is Kathy Ryan, representing the applicant in item three. Okay. We understand that, I'm sorry? Go, I'm sorry, go ahead. Uh, we were hoping to request a postponement. Um, I understand that that typically needs at least one business day. Um, alternatively, we were going to request a withdrawal. However, we would prefer to get the item postponed. Um, we have 
you know, with, with there's some staffing vacancies and then some board vacancies and we thought it would be best to postpone our item for the time being. Um, with the 48 hour notice for the links, we've had some individuals that were hoping to participate today that I, I understand have also had some issues getting that. So that would be our request of the board. Okay, there's a request before the board. I'd like to make a motion whether to uh, accept that request or deny it. Uh, Mr. Vice Chair, is, it, is that, or uh, actually Charles, is that a, uh, what do we call it? Not a postponement, a table? So it's either a, a postponement or a continuance. Continuance. You know, I think uh, in the code to table an item uh, would postpone it for longer than the uh, two week period. So I guess uh -oh. it, it would, depends on the, the applicant when they wish to return. Okay, thank you. Mr. Vice Chair, I'll, I'll move that we postpone item number three in the docket for further time. And, and so I guess for further clarity, um, Kathy, do, is there a, a particular date that you uh, would wish to return or is this kind of like a postponed? As, as soon as, no, as soon as possible. Okay. Yeah, that, okay, I have a motion. Yeah. Do I have a second? Second. To Ms. Ms. Pam Smith. I'll take the roll, Mr. Weiss. Mr. Weiss? Yes. No, I didn't hear you. I'm sorry. Uh, Ms. Ms. Dobbins? Yes. Uh, Mr. Zelasko? Aye. Ms. McKenzie? Aye. Chairman votes, vice chairman votes aye. So that that uh, that is accepted. Thank you, Chairman. We will move on to the next item, which is 1530 Ray Street. Mr. Owens. Uh, Mr. Chair, I believe 1439 oh, Street is the first item. On oh, the I'm list. sorry. You're right. I looked at I looked at item two. I'm sorry. Okay. He heavens forbid there should be a change in the order. Uh, <laughs> 1439 Elm Street. Sorry. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, so this is an application for a certificate of appropriateness and zoning relief for 1439 Elm Street in the Over the Rhine Historic District. Uh, the applicant is proposing to rehabilitate the property into a single family dwelling from the exist existing mixed use building that is currently on the site. Um, as part of that renovation, the uh, Zoning relief will be required in the form of a conditional use approval, which is required to have ground floor residential uses in the CCA district. They will also need a locational variance to locate an accessory structure in the side yard, which in this case would be an in-ground swimming pool. And they also are asked, will need a uh, dimensional variance for a 13-foot wall along Elm Street and an 8.5-foot wall along West, 5th, West 15th Street. Let me share my screen. Okay, so these are the existing conditions of the subject property currently. Uh, this is the current side yard along Elm Street, which is now a vacant lot. This is to the rear of the building along 15th Street, showing an existing non-contributing deck structure on coming off the second floor and a vacant lot adjacent to the building. This is the 15th Street facade and the Elm Street facade. So the applicant is proposing as part of the renovation into a single family dwelling, uh, the complete renovation of the interior and exterior of the building. That would include an addition on the rooftop for a staircase penthouse that would allow access to an upper floor roof deck. Uh, and then also they are proposing a garage addition off the rear of the building. That addition will also feature the wall that I mentioned previously, the eight and a half foot wall uh, to provide screening for the garage, as well as a gate to, for access to that garage structure. 
And then along the Elm Street facade, you can see the 13 foot tall wall that is along the frontage of Elm Street that will provide screening for their outdoor space on the existing vacant lot. Uh, so regarding the uh, the accessory structure, uh, this is the pool that is in the side yard. You can see this is currently vacant land along wrapping around the building. So you can see the uh, wall along Elm Street is, is located at the front here, patio space behind, a low level deck addition will be added to the side of the building that will have a pergola over the front portion. And then the, the pool will be located here with another patio behind. This is the access drive for the, for the new uh, garage that's proposed, which will be located directly behind the building along the 15th street frontage. Uh, there will also be a six foot tall metal, black metal gate along the Southern property lines. And <clears throat> you can see, uh, from this drawing, the structure that will be added to the top of the roof to allow the access to the rooftop penthouse. Uh, this is pushed towards the rear of the building, allowing it to uh, hide its visibility when viewed from the front street. We do have a uh, sightline diagram that shows that that will not be visible. Uh, the applicant did also work with staff to reduce the massing that was originally proposed here to, to help make it uh, less visible from any of the, the surrounding streets. So while uh, it still will be visible from 15th Street as well uh, um, and to the rear, uh, as well as having some visibility along the side street when you're close to the building, it is uh, well done as far as it's, it's massing to try to hide as much as possible. And then the use of the materials will also help to blend into the background. The deck itself will have a clear glass rail along the top um, to help minimize the impact of that roof deck also. Uh, so on this elevation, you can see the pergola structure that will be built on top of the low level deck. And you can see the uh, massing for the garage addition that will be built on the rear of the property. Also, this is the sight line drawing showing that that uh, rooftop penthouse is not going to be visible from the Elm Street facade. And here you can see along the 15th Street facade, it will have visibility, but it is a relatively low um, addition being only about five feet at the edge of the parapet. Uh, I'm sorry, that's uh, just over three feet when, when including the parapet. So that being said, um, Staff does feel that the, the proposed changes are appropriate and do generally meet the requirements of the historic conservation guidelines. Um, in particular, with respect to the walls along the uh, Elm Street facade, staff does feel that this is an appropriate treatment as it's currently a vacant lot. There is a, a wood fence across the vacant lot to, te to keep trespassers out. Um, but adding the taller wall that the code allows will allow more privacy and security in that outdoor space that the, the applicants have that are proposing. And it will also be in the height of the, the first story on the adjacent buildings. It will help to fill that gap that that vacant lot creates and bring that wall up to the edge, creating that more of a, a continuance, continuing built uh, environment along the streetscape. So staff is supportive of the requests for relief as well as the certificate of appropriateness. We do recommend approval of the conditional use for the ground floor residential use, approval of the locational variance to locate an accessory structure in the side yard, and approval of the dimensional variance for a 13 foot wall along Elm Street and an eight and a half foot wall along West 15th Street. We also recommend approval of the certificate of appropriateness for the proposed additions, roof deck and exterior rehabilitation with the condition that the building permit must be issued within two years or the COA shall expire. Okay, thank you very much. Do we have a representative from the applicant that would like to speak? 
Um, hi, uh, this is uh, David from Team B Architecture and Design. Um, we're happy to field any questions. Is there anything that you would like to add? Questions, but don't have anything additional. Okay. Uh, I don't have a list of anybody signed up to uh, testify. Uh, Mr. Sunderman, I sent you an email with uh, that list. Oh, uh, wait a minute. Yeah, uh, 310. Oh, 310. Okay, sorry. We'll, we'll, we'll get that. Yes, you did. Oh, okay. So where you have item one, uh, that is that is the one we just had? Yes. That's, okay, okay. Uh, David Corbs is, is okay. signed up. Da da David Corbs? Is David Corbs here? Yeah, he just um, spoke. Oh, 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 yeah, that's right. Okay, uh, would you be sworn? We we need to swear you in, David. I I don't think he has anything to, to add. Oh, that's okay. Uh, Katie Heil. Hi. Yes, I'm here. <laughs> uh, is there anything you'd like to add? Uh, no, I don't believe so. <laughs> okay, good enough. Then. Uh, that having been said, I, I will, uh, does, does the uh, board have any questions of staff or any of the witnesses? You know, actually, Mr. Vice Chair, um, for Mr. Corpus, I do have a question. The, uh, the fences that look like they're integral at the building where they're extended, is that the same color as the original building or they intended to be and i just and maybe it's just me but i i felt the extended it from the pictures that i have it looks like the base is extended and the kind of the building kind of loses its verticality i didn't know if that if anybody had brought that up that issue up before or how you plan to address it does that make sense so, um, Mr. Corbs, before you respond, I'm going to have to swear you in. Okay. Uh, could you raise your right hand? Do you swear or affirm to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Thanks. Um. um but we have, um, that hasn't been addressed to us as any concern. Um, we are, uh, if you will, like separating um, the massing with a, with a slight recess between the two. Okay. It, it may read that way. Um, you do the have paint a does match. Uh, and. Yeah, let me, I could also type my response in a chat if it's possible, but. It's not possible. Uh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> I got you. No, I'm good um, with it. I'm, I'm generally in favor of it. I just, that was a little idiosyncrasy that kind of caught my eye. I may be a little more concerned about it. Okay. And Mr. Zalasko, if I may, um, I neglected to mention in my uh, presentation, it is in the staff report, but the building is proposed to be painted. So right now it does have the dark brick coloring on the main building. Uh, it is proposed to be painted. I'm not entirely sure. I, I believe the walls were intended to be the same color um, as the building. I'm not entirely sure about that. Uh, however, you know, generally this building was unpainted brick previously, so that is a request that they are making as well to paint the building. Um, the, the side wall and the rear wall were both former party walls that are able to be painted. The 15th Street frontage and the Elm Street frontage were not previously painted, so they are requesting to paint that. 
Um, partially, they do have a letter from Mason saying that the specific brick that's used on this building would be difficult to match. And there is some infill that is required on the ground floor along the 15th street side to um, replace the, the uh, non-historic storefront that was cut into the building and to alter some of those window openings slightly. Um, so that compared with some of the un unsympathetic mortar work that has been done on the building in the past and other repairs that uh, are fairly obvious to see to the eye, staff is supportive of, of that, of painting all the facades of the building. Thank you, Mr. Owen. Okay, this is really a major uh, building. When you go down and you see the mass of this thing and how it's going to be, I, I think this is going to be real, really neat. Uh, I, I don't, I'm guessing there aren't a lot of outdoor swimming pools, private swimming pools in the over the Rhine area. They look real, this could be really neat. Uh, that it, all having been said, uh, I will uh, accept a motion. Mr. Vice Chair, I'll, I'll uh, move that we approve the zoning relief for the conditional use, the locational variance, and the dimensional variance for the wall fences and for the certificate of appropriateness. Second. Second. Okay. I'll call the roll. Mr. Weiss? Yes. Ms. Smith Dobbins? Yes. <clears throat> yes. Mr. Zelasco? I Yes. Ms. McKenzie? Aye. Vice Chairman votes aye. It's passed. The next item we have is uh, 1530 to 1534 Race Street. Mr. Owens. Thank you, Mr. Chair. This is an application for zoning relief as well as a certificate of appropriateness for 1530 to 1534 Race Street in the Over the Rhine Historic District. Uh, the applicant is proposing the rehabilitation of these buildings into art gallery space on the ground floor with four apartments above. Uh, the non-contributing garage addition that's located on the property is proposed to be demolished as well as the non-contributing concrete block additions that wrap around to the rear of the building. Uh, this will also include a, a courtyard and a parking area at the location of that former garage addition with a brick screen wall and Corton steel plate sliding gates to allow access to the parking area. There will be an exterior stair and a brick refuse and HVAC enclosure along Goose Alley, as well as an elevator addition added between the two buildings. The facade will feature a new glass and steel storefront system, and the buildings will also feature new balconies and roof decks on the side and rear of the building. So uh, on your screen, you can see the existing conditions of the building. This is the non-contributing garage at 1530 Race Street that is listed as a non-contributing building in the Over the Rhine Conservation Guidelines. And then you can see that wraps around on the rear of the building as a uh, unsympathetic concrete block non-contributing addition on the rear along Goose Alley. So that is the section that is proposed for demolition. Uh, I should note that there is also a section of the wall and the roof of the center building at 1532 Ray Street that will be removed to add a roof deck on the rear of that building. Um, so you can see in the site plan a little more clearly, the non-contributing structure that is proposed to be demolished that is quite large on the lot, as well as there is a, uh, a non-original stair structure in the center that will be demolished to be replaced with the new staircase and elevator penthouse, elevator tower. Um, so you can see the proposed changes on the site plan. Uh, this is the new wall that is proposed where the non-contributing garage addition is, allowing access to the courtyard. There will be a sliding gate on this side. That will be a steel gate. Um, this will be a courtyard area used for the gallery space. 
a new balcony is proposed on the side of the building. This is the um, new enclosure that will be built along Goose Alley that will house the refuse storage area and HVAC equipment. Um, another small addition on the rear of the north building with a rooftop deck on the top of that. And then finally in the center, the new stair tower and elevator tower with a, uh, a balcony behind. All right, um, so you can see on the, the side elevation drawing the location of the elevator tower. It will be taller than the surrounding buildings, which is necessary to house the uh, mechanical equipment related to that elevator. Um, so it does stick above the top of the building. However, it will not be visible when viewed from the front. Um, it will be screened from view by the, by the surrounding buildings. And then you can see more clearly on this, uh, the section of the roof that is proposed to be removed in order to provide the rooftop deck on this, this rear portion of the building. Um, And here you can see the, the sight line drawing showing how that elevator tower is hidden by the front of the building. Mm. And this is a sample material of the gate that will be installed at the um, Ray Street frontage as well as the Goose Alley frontage. And you can see on the rendering that gate will be installed at the parking access locations. The wall to the side will be a decorative um, have decorative brickwork that will allow views into and out of the courtyard space for the galley or excuse me the gallery and another view of that along the side will allow views to the church to and from the church so um, staff generally feels that these changes are appropriate and do largely meet the historic conservation guidelines the majority of the addition work will be in the rear of the building along Goose Alley and will not be highly visible from um, any of the surrounding streets. They are definitely an improvement over the existing additions that are on the site. They will be clad in brick. Um, and the um, elevator tower will be clad in a metal zinc cladding material. And the balcony on the side elevation will be clad with a uh, perforated metal material, which will not be highly visible from the main street as it's primarily blocked by the, uh, the L of the building along, along Ray Street. Um, and you can see here as well, this is the new rooftop deck that is proposed with the removal of portions of those sidewalls and the roof. So I know generally it's not a treatment that we like to see on historic buildings, but because of its location at the rear of the lot between other historic buildings, it largely will be screened from view. Although I would note there is a small section of Liberty Street where a portion of that fourth floor would be visible, uh, but that is the, the best view of that shot from any of the surrounding streets. So. Uh, because it will not be highly visible, staff is not terribly concerned about the loss of the, the sidewalls and the, uh, the roof structure on that. Uh, so part of this request does include a dimensional variance that would allow this screen wall along the front, uh, the side, and the rear of the building. Walls are limited to eight or excuse me, six feet in height, they are proposing an 11 foot tall wall, which staff does feel is appropriate in this instance, bringing the height taller than the six feet that's required by the code will allow the wall to, to better match the height of the first floor of adjacent buildings, similar to what we saw in the previous proposal. Um, so it will fill in the gap that would otherwise be left by the uh, removal of the non-contributing building. So um, the storefront treatment on the front also um, is right now it is not original on, on the building. They are proposing a, uh, a glass storefront treatment with a metal panel to form the knee wall along the, the bottom. And then also on the, the main building here, 
the doorway on the building has been removed as well as the steps that would have led to that door. Uh, that was, those are the existing conditions that is not no longer intact. Uh, the applicant is not proposing to have this as, a, as an entry to the gallery space. So he's proposing to replace that former door opening with a, a solid uh, plate glass window similar to a storefront. So staff is supportive of the requested zoning relief to allow, uh, uh, excuse me, staff does recommend approval of the dimensional variance to an allow an 11 foot wall in excess of the six foot height limit. And staff also does recommend approval for the certificate of appropriateness for the demolition additions and exterior rehabilitation with the condition that the building permit be issued within two years or the COA shall expire. Thank you very much, Mr. Owen. Uh, we have some people signed up that would like to testify. Uh, Terry Bowling. Is Mr. Bowling still here? Uh, do you have Ben Romero and Mesa Bowling from Terry Bowling's office? Uh, okay, okay. I, wh whomever that, who, who is it that would like to speak? Um, we actually don't have anything to add. Uh, thank you. Douglas, okay, for... good enough. All right. All right. What about thank Tammy you. White? Hi, I'm the owner and I, I don't have anything to add. Okay, fine. Uh, any questions from the board for staff or anyone that's testified? Hearing none, I will uh, accept a uh, motion. Chairman or Vice Chairman, I will make a motion to approve the certificate of appropriateness and zoning variances as laid out by staff. Second. Thank you. Uh, the roll, Mr. Weiss? Yes. Ms. Smith Dobbins? Yes. Mr. Zelasco? Aye. Ms. McKenzie? Aye. And I vote aye. I would say that today we added two mm -hmm. really good structures to the over the Rhine area. This this is a this is a this is a good day. Uh, I think uh, Mr. Owens or, or Charles, did we have something else we needed to do today? Uh, I believe we do also have the, we need the review and approval of the staff issued COAs that was included in the packet. Okay. So what, what do we need to do? Uh, so there was a, a list of the staff approved certificate of appropriatenesses from May 2022 included in the packet. So um, basically the board needs to, to vote to accept those uh, approvals. And I'm here in case you have any questions on any of those approvals that were granted. Can, can we do that all in one vote? I believe so, yes. Yes. Okay, yeah, well, let's, let's just... Okay, do I have a motion to accept those uh, approvals? So moved. A second? Second. Okay, I'll go call the roll. Mr. Weiss? Yes. Ms. Smith Dobbins? Yes. Mr. Zelasco? Aye. Ms. McKenzie? Aye. And I vote aye. With that, I will accept a motion to adjourn. Before we adjourn, I, I see some uh, uh, people who, has, who had signed up to speak for item three. And I just wanted to say that uh, the board accepted a request by the applicant to postpone item, hearing item three. The uh, hearing date hasn't been set as of yet, but uh, notices will be sent out to, uh, I guess, it, as required by the, by the code and to anybody who signed up to speak. Thank you, Mr. Martinez. That, that was very helpful. Uh, given that, do I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. 
Do I have a second? Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Thank you very much, everyone. Take care. Bye-bye.